My dad played with Tito, you know, and, and when I was five years old, you know, he gave me a trumpet. And sort of like, you know, it's, he didn't force me to play, but it was my dad, so I, I wanted to, you know, make him happy. So I was hitting all these like high notes and he, he, was, he was actually playing stuff on the trumpet. Like he'd play like a C and he'd say, what note is that? And I'd be like... I don't know, but in time, I actually, as like a six-year-old, developed perfect pitch from those experiences with my dad. I was actually taking trumpet lessons from Lou and my dad. Wow, that was... But then, when I was 16, that was the end of the trumpet because, well, actually I played up until high school, mm. but I got interested in the bass. There was a bass in, on the front porch of my house, and I just started plucking on it, and, and that was it. You know, I was finished with the trumpet, and, and I decided I wanted to play bass, but my father wasn't really thrilled about that because he wanted me to play trumpet. But, so I started playing bass, and I started doing things on it like that were, f at least at the time, and at least in my mind, like different. I was playing like a lot of Bach stuff and cello, sweet violin. You know, in, in the late 70s, it wasn't maybe so prevalent, you know. Mm. I, and Lou was very uh, encouraging with that. He would say, my dad wouldn't, wasn't necessarily thrilled with that. Like his, his idea of a great musician was somebody that knew like every standard ever yeah, written. Sure, like, you know, hand signal, club dates, you know, guys. <laughs> yeah. And that, to me, that wasn't really what I wanted to do. So he, he, we actually had like a little bit of a falling out. He didn't approve, understand, like, w you know, what I was trying to do on the instrument. But Lou was like, keep going in that direction, do your own thing, you know what I mean? Like, don't, don't listen to him, he means well, he's your dad, but he's, you, if you listen to him, you're just going to be like a guy that plays club dates in the city, and there's nothing really wrong with that, but, you know, if you want to do more than that, try to have your own voice, you know? In 1980, like, I was the first guy from my school that wanted to study music in, in college, uh -huh. and I think Ron was teaching somewhere, mm -hmm. maybe at William Patterson? I, I don't know. I'm not quite sure, but uh, I was the first guy to say I wanted to go, and I was the first guy to, to say after like the first semester, this isn't for me. Yeah. Which, and my logic was that, and it's actually, in retrospect, I would probably change my, what I did, but as an 18-year-old kid, I decided like, well, if I'm here learning the same, everybody's learning the same stuff. Play this mode, play the right, here's two right. five one, two lines and stuff. And then I, at at 18 years old, I was like cognizant of the fact that I was just going to be like everybody else. Pretty perceptive at that age. Well, you know, I actually, if you've ever seen uh, the the farewell concert to Cream, did you ever see that? Yeah, sure. And Jack Bruce was talking about that. Mm. In that, he was talking about how he, you know, he was. He came to those same revelations that I did. Like he just said, I was just going to be like fourth desk cello player, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. but I could honestly say, looking back, it would have been good to learn things I didn't learn, as long as I didn't like lose my sense of self. Like yeah. in other words, you could go to school and learn everything, but still have your own identity. Yeah. And I thought that it, the two were like mutually exclusive, yeah. but you know. First gig at a, as a bass player, my dad used to lug me around on those society gigs in the city, like Lester Land and like, you know, society dates. And I was 16 years old, 17. And when he felt that I was competent enough, he'd bring me up on stage and I'd be like finding my way through these changes. And I, I thought I'd, I, w I was given the thumbs up by the guys in his band, which were great guys wow. that used to do that type of work back then, you know. Mm. Those are the earliest things that I did. But my first actual paid gig was... Uh, in a hotel in Tarrytown, New York, like back in the days when you used to have hotel gigs. Yes, Remember six nights a week? Games, yeah. I was in hotel six nights a week. Yeah, I've been there. Done that. From 1984, mm. like the first six months of that year. Mm -hmm. You know, prior to that, I was like working like a regular job, mm. bringing home like $150 a week. But that gig paid me $300 cash. Wow. So I thought like that I was over, I had a maid. I'm, look at this, <laughs> this is great. I'm, I can't believe, but you know what happened after that? I had no work for like a year <laughs> because that's the way it is, you yeah, know. Yeah. And so, you know, all the ups and downs you get 
with music, you know, and for a long time, you know, I just dealt with it.